So let's take a look at why catch positions are so important to be able to create an effective stroke, to be efficient, and how a poor catch differs so significantly from a good catch in the way that it ends up playing out through the entire stroke. So um, I'd like to do this side by side because it gives you a really clear indicator of why we spend so much time focusing on the catch position. And I like to use these this kind of tracking uh, system here because it really helps you see the outcome of what's going on with one stroke versus the other. So on the left, we have what I would consider a good catch position. This is a great catch position, in fact. It is heels down, shins as vertical as possible, back as flat as possible, or we call it neutral spine, um, lats engaged, head and neck relaxed, elbows extended, and hands in the right position. On the right, we have a, what is a very common catch position for a lot of people in their stroke, and that's rounded spine, hips underneath the shoulders, and heels lifted, and those are often the three biggest issues that we face. You can also see that because of those positions, my arms are resting on my legs on the right-hand side. So let's just run through a stroke here, a drive, and let's see how this plays out in the way that force is applied, which we can track by watching what the shoulders do. So there we go, there's our drive. Let's take a look at what the differences are between the two. Number one, on the left, you can see that there's a slight upward trajectory to that line, and then it tapers on tapers down after it passes what we would consider kind of a peak force moment. Now, on the right, it almost instantly begins driving downward and into the seat. What does that tell us about where the force is applied? On the left-hand side, there is a slight press of my body up. Now, the reason I can press up is because when I lock into a good catch, my body hangs off of the handle when I push through the legs. Because I create a moment of tension, as I push through the legs, it suspends my mass on the handle. And that ultimately is the goal for how you create the most power possible, is that you want to suspend your mass on the handle as much as you can. The you obviously want to avoid driving too much uh, into the handle because then you end up jumping off the seat. That's if you create too much vertical versus horizontal force. So on the left-hand side, you can see that there's that slight upward trajectory. What that's showing is that my shoulders are swinging up and over my hips, and that's because I maintain the same posture throughout the stroke. So as I get taller, the line gets higher, and then I taper off at the end, which is as I complete the body swing of the drive. Now on the right-hand side, because I am already in an open position, the only thing I can do is push through the ball of my foot, which creates a purely horizontal and almost a downward force as opposed to a vertical force. And so as I drive, you see that taper down because I'm falling into the stroke instead of pressing through the stroke. Now, that all may have been quite complicated, so let's distill it down to the important points. On the left-hand side, I am pushing through my entire leg, and that is creating a drive up and off the seat, which allows my body to suspend on the handle. Or if you want to think about it this way, your body is a chain. A, a bunch of links held together, and if I don't keep those links strong, then I'm going to see a power dump, meaning all the work that I'm trying to do on this machine is going to exit wherever I have a, a power dump or a leak in my, in my uh, chain, if you will, a broken link. On the right-hand side, uh, so on the left-hand side, when I go to drive, all those links are locked in place, which means that as I push through my feet to push through my legs, it translates directly to the handle. On the right hand side, let's consider we have a broken link in the poor posture, the hips underneath the shoulders, and only the toes pressing into the machine. So as I press, I'm having all these broken links, so that force is not being applied to the handle, and instead it's just, it's basically a falling stroke. There really is no force being applied through the heels, which means that the legs are not working very well, the body mass is not producing force for me, and all in all, it's a losing stroke. So let's just move through another stroke here. 
you'll see that again on the right hand side that same pattern duplicates and on the left hand side you're going to see another upward trajectory of that same shoulder. So it's mimicking exactly what happens every time. If you have a uh, if you have a poor posture or a, a, a not locked in catch, you are going to consistently be driving your force down and into the seat as opposed to with a good catch, you're going to be able to suspend your mass on the handle, you're going to be able to push force through your legs, and you're going to create what is a consistently efficient stroke path. And that's where a lot of people really struggle is finding that efficiency, and I don't blame you. To be able to learn this catch on the left as opposed to the catch on the right takes a lot of attention and focus. So to do that, I want you to practice by bringing yourself to the catch position. Now I'm going to show you how I set up for this catch. Now on the left, watch how my body is just gently getting into alignment here. I'm doing a checklist from my hands all the way down to my feet. So I'm thinking hands relaxed, elbows extended, shoulders dropped and forward, but my lats engaged, my head and, neck's re my head and neck is relaxed, my back is neutral, my hips are behind my shoulders, my knees are underneath my arms, my shins are vertical, my heels are down, and I'm compressed as much as possible with a good position. And on the right, it's just a lazy catch. So to practice this, go through that checklist that I just recited and take 50 strokes. Every single stroke you're going to come back to the catch and you're going to reset with that mental checklist every single time and then you will go to drive by initiating and pushing through the legs and that leg drive is going to really create that force for you and you're looking for that upward trajectory of the shoulder. A good way for you to catch yourself and to see if you are actually doing it is to record yourself from a profile view. I would highly encourage you to do that. And then you can take a look afterwards, compare it to this video and see how it plays out. And then in the comments below, leave a note as to if this makes sense, how you stacked up to what you're seeing here and what you'd like to see us address next time as a side-by-side -side review. Thanks guys.